I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good night, good night, Adam Jones. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful night? Mate, I am in a phenomenal spot. I'm in Sydney for the weekend at the moment, so or up until Thursday, and I love it up in Sydney. Any any time away from Melbourne and doing some kind of holiday, I'm in a in a good place. I think. That's great. Well, I'm glad that you are in my future. It sounds as though it's great over there. Yeah. Oh, it's phenomenal, man. So oh. yeah, just up here, and yeah. That's love wonderful. it love it in sydney that's wonderful well do tell me adam which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time so i also do two podcasts myself and i think the the main one um i guess is the future of structures podcast which is a podcast on the buildings industry where i speak to i guess some of the a lot of the different building experts bringing in new technologies and and whatever new skills they got um just for people in the buildings industry and it's got a, a sustainability theme on it. And, and yeah, so mainly just the, the podcasting and some of my work I've been doing in the buildings industry as well. Hmm, that's amazing. I just had like two episodes back, like the guy whose earliest childhood memory was um, one of those cement mixers, or the concrete mixers. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like his earliest childhood memory was being on the work site and seeing that spinning. Well, he's a content strategist, a strategist, so he's there, and it's amazing how that connected. Um, are you dealing with the engineering side on the podcast, or are you dealing with the social side or, or the social economic side, or how it affects the social? Yeah. yeah, is that it? Yeah. Oh, so my background is... As a structural engineer um so it's it's partially on engineering but then in in architecture as well and and i had a podcast with someone on water scarcity so it still goes pretty broad and i go into areas i've got no idea about and you know i'm just way out of my depth with most <laughs> of the topics i'm doing but when it comes to engineering on yeah I'm, i i try and one of the goals for me with the podcast was i guess to to learn new things and I think doing a podcast is one of the most efficient ways of learning stuff. If you know, if you're speaking to the people at the top, then yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic way to to yeah learn stuff. Yeah, it's a great cheat, isn't it? <laughs> oh mate, it's a it's a hack. It you know, is. I was like my second or third year in into my career, and just because I'm doing a podcast, you know, people I'd usually never have the opportunity to speak to, just because I say I'm doing a podcast, it's like. You know, it's a high percentage rate of, of um, you know, people expecting to come on just because no one else is asking them yeah. in, in that industry anyway. Yeah, it definitely is amazing. Wow. It's it's like, you know, the Superman, hey, with great power comes great responsibility. Um, what you're doing, you're at actually creating a space, though, for the recording of history at the same time, right? Yeah, that's that's right. So, you know, there's so much technological change in the world at the moment. So it's it's a kind of space that's going to become more and more relevant. So as you know, as in the future, it's yeah, it's always going to be there. And so people can listen on demand. So, yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. So who did you learn the skill of communication from? So I, I I don't think I was ever a good communicator before I started doing podcasting. I was okay, but I, I still don't consider myself amazing at it or anything. But it's something I kind of just jumped in and started doing anyway. And then just through doing it, I think I learned the skills. So not necessarily off people as much. It's just more by, for me, I think it was more trial and error of just doing, you know, more and more kind of cheap episodes and just kind of building it and just making it a little bit better every time and um yeah from there i think i i you know developed some kind of skill i think yeah well and you know it's just amazing like you were talking about how messed up your episodes may have been in the beginning but just thinking like the the initial start of so the initial and start are the same right so the initiation of a building it's really messy isn't it <laughs> like yeah that's, that's like, spot on like you could yeah. when you see that it's it's okay no i mean you could be looking at design you could look at the blueprint you could see that but to see someone 
dig the earth and it's a mess isn't it it's just amazing yeah. that you're doing what you're doing there and it's a principle that's applicable in anything you're, you you're doing or building yeah totally i think i think chaos is is everywhere and you know there's nothing's ever nothing worthwhile anyway is going to be you know perfect and straightforward from the start it's going to be that moment of chaos at the start when you're starting to do something before you start figuring it out and it's like really important i think to not be a perfectionist sometimes and you know and just just get it out and just 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 do it anyway without you know too much analytical thought and as an engineer that goes probably against how i'm wired but yeah i think it's, it's i think it's true yeah definitely is well tell me one other thing that you've done adam consistently over the last three years so i'll say maybe not quite three years but about two and a half years ago maybe three years i started doing a lot more meditation and i think uh i think you know started off probably 10 minutes a day now it's 10 to 15 minutes twice a day so it's you know not a big time investment but something that's had a huge really huge impact i think in in my life for sure how does that make you feel um definitely less less stress but i find definitely 100 less stress but i find myself doing a lot more but at the same time being incredibly less busy so i think being mindful and being a step back from whatever you, what you're doing in the day-to-day kind of stuff you can start choosing what you spend your time on and when you start doing that you can you can cut out all the meaningless bullshit and just be left with some of the the more meaningful stuff that actually is is really effective work um so i think that's what's happened the three years and that probably goes against the grain of a lot a lot of people see meditation is you know like smoking joints and playing bongos in the bush kind of stuff but it's you know it's it's really practical in like say the, the corporate world as well just for for work okay i was listening to one podcast and a guy um he expressed that exact sentiment he said that uh however it's really amazing to see how um meditation is all of a sudden becoming the in thing like in corporate mm. world and you know just to see everyone adapting the value of what meditation brings is pretty intriguing. Why would you suggest to someone that's listening that they should even consider doing what you've done with meditation? I think, I think for me, like, like I just said, I think it's, you know, if I walk around and cause I'll work as an engineer as well um, in the office and I ask someone, how are you? And then sometimes the reply I get actually is busy, you know, <laughs> that's the answer. And I think that's a super unhealthy thing that's come into the, into the world. I don't, you know, remember too far back what it used to be like, but it just seems like that's a common thing now. It's just a a default response is busy. And so many people are probably going to go through their whole lives up, you know, in the next 20 to 40 years or whatever, being in this default state of of busyness. So I think if you meditate, you can take a step back from this whole busyness state and then, and then you can kind of separate work from work. And then when you're doing work, you're fully present trying to get that stuff done and then when you're out and if you're having a few beers with your friends or whatever you're doing on the weekend you can be fully there and then just enjoy that so i think for me it's probably the highest leverage action that i know of that can have the biggest impacts on your life so i'd say that you know and maybe exercise behind that what amazing audience we are live again with adam jones and you can definitely check him out he is the host of the podcast what you will learn podcast right as well as the future of structures podcast uh definitely check that out adam let's switch gears for a moment now let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful warm blue caribbean water Adam, what is your earliest childhood memory? Nice. I love the art. I, I was going to tell you, man, you got the, one of the best podcast voices I've ever heard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my earliest childhood memory, I'd say, is my with my brother. when I He must have been five. I must have been about two or maybe two to three, I think. And I just remember him teaching me maths. Or he, I think he had his first maths class or something, and he was just teaching me a really simple addition kind of two plus three or you know something like that um at my the obviously my home growing up on a coffee table next to a window in the sun um i I think that's my earliest memory and it's it's quite vague uh but yeah it's there somewhere i think the guy right before you his earliest childhood memory was running up against a coffee table (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and cracking open his head. That's just amazing. Yeah. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind? Yeah, please. I love the idea of the simplicity that occurred when you came up with the addition, if you would, of what was required to learn the best and most effective way you can learn, which for us for us and it's not for all but for us is yeah. adding one plus one which is one podcaster and one guest and having a conversation <laughs> yeah <laughs> pretty amazing right <laughs> yeah 100 percent, man yeah simple Bloody addition yeah. simple addition yeah. your brother That's showed you hmm. if yeah, we, if, totally, yeah if we fast forward to when you were 12 what was your favorite song my favorite song when i was 12 i my f- the first thing that came to my head was a probably a, probably an Eminem song. That's when I was going through a bit of a, you know, thought I was a cool kind of gangster kind of phase. And yeah. I was had a period where I really enjoyed Eminem. Yeah. What song comes to probably mind? Probably Stan. Okay. Um, Stan, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just well, like you definitely connected. made your stand, didn't you, in this life? Yeah, you made your stand, didn't you? Yeah, totally. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Adam. Well, we have now arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it'd be yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Adam? Bloody oath, man. Adam, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, no, not yet, to be honest. Are you married? No. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. Or about three hours a week? Uh... Probably not, no. What about screen time? The phone and the computer, is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Less. All right, Adam, after 1,001 conversations in three months, I came up with something. It's called yours, which is your own unique real self. And the idea is you answer questions there in that workbook that unveil, if you would, your own unique real statement. If you had to share with us, Adam, your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Adam Jones, what would you say that is? I would say right now, for me, it would be not all input is equal and by that i mean um if you're doing if you're trying to do something um some kind of work is more effective than others so not not all input is creates the the same output so Mm -hmm. more of a focus on the input love it love it just like that sum your brother showed you right (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's right man But Adam, this it, all, bit, it all it all comes. I mean, well, you would understand my term boomerang, right? Definitely, it all comes back. Yeah, totally. yeah. But Adam, this has been a great pleasure, my friend. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, if you want to find out more about my podcast, as you mentioned, you know, future of structures and what you will learn, which we haven't really spoken about today, that's also a, a great podcast as well. If people want to get involved, Adam Jones, thank you for being on what is inspired by twelve minute convos with NG. Matt, you're a champion and thank you so much. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition the signs and symptoms and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.